Yo, it's Tyler Bryant from Tyler Bryant and the Shakedown. I'm here to talk about some of the guitar techniques I use on the road and in the studio. So hopefully you can take a couple of them or uh, more and put them to good use. So I've, I prepared a backing track for you guys. Uh, nothing special, just something that I made to practice over myself here in my home studio. And uh, I find it beneficial to play with drums or some some sort of rhythm. Um, it kind of I feel like it can set you up to walk into a jam situation or you know into a jam with a band a little better than just playing as if you were in a guitar shop or something testing out a guitar I think it just kinda enhances the overall vibe so the the track that I prepared is in the key of B so we'll start there and uh, we're gonna talk about a couple of things we're gonna talk about bending sliding repetition probably one of the most important parts of soloing which is space sometimes you can say more with nothing than you can with all the notes in the world so we're going to start here on the B string, and we're going to bend up on the 10th fret. So notice we're alternating between these half steps. Those notes are a half step apart, and it creates this tension. It sounds snotty, and then when you, when you release it, it's satisfying. And I, and I like to play around with half steps a lot, you know, like if, even if you start, like say we're playing in the key of B, and you start on a B flat by mistake, you can save that. You can always save it by bending up or just kind of change the vibe a little bit. And if you really botch it, do it three more times than you meant to do it. <laughs> That's something I learned a long time ago. All right, so... So that's taking that major note and bending it up. So notice we just went, we played all of those notes in the solo and that, and it works um, because we're bending, we're making it work. Alright, so let's talk about repetition. For example, this lick here. When I when I learn a lick like that, even you know, it can be anything. For me, it's it's so helpful to just turn the volume down. Like if, if my friends are having a conversation or if there's a movie playing or something, and just go. And then take a lick like that and Try to get as much out of it as you can. Like, rearrange it. Another thing I wanted to talk about, just a, a quick example, would be, say we're going to do this. We can get from A to B in a cooler way, in a, in a way that I like to use a lot of sliding. So we would go. I love how frantic that can sound. And you know, sometimes you can just slide up to a random spot and bend it into place and get something really cool. And it's, I mean, that's just, that's just part of one of the things I love about rock and roll is it can sound kind of frantic and if you own it, if you play this thing like you're the boss of it, it'll work. So that was with the thumb and the index finger. I've got the pick right there. And sometimes I will, uh, like there I've got it in that finger, and I'm using these two. Some of my favorite players are the guys that would keep the rhythm going with their thumb, while they were playing. You know, a lot of it was with slide, but uh, one thing I like to practice with my fingers is just keeping the, that going.
some of my favorite players use their thumb to keep rhythm and will you know do other things rhythmically with their other fingers while their thumb is kind of keeping the bass so So that's something to think about too. Um, if you're getting into playing with your fingers, you can practice using your thumb and index finger, just doing something simple like this. And try to get each note to ring out evenly. Um, you know, I'm holding the pick here right now when I was doing that sometimes sometimes it'll end up magically in that finger I hope this has been helpful to you guys. Enjoy the backing track, and uh, we'll see you out on the road. Take care.